So today's reading is a story that we have all heard throughout our lives. We've definitely heard it in Sunday school, and we hear it repeated several times during the year, and it's even become within secular culture uh, very, very familiar to us. That is the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes, all right? But where we, and, and in fact, whenever you see, as you've heard me say before, whenever you see a gospel reading that is repeated in all four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, then that's something that grabs our attention because there are many things that are recorded in Matthew that are not in Mark or not in John, and then many things that are in John that are not in the synoptics, the Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So when we see it in all four Gospels, that has to tell us something. Okay, so what does it tell us? Well, Jesus is the miracle worker. He takes a couple of fish and he takes five loaves, or in the second one he takes seven loaves, and bingo, bango, he feeds everybody. Is that the end of the story? Is that what we're supposed to take from it? That Jesus is the great miracle worker? Well, in the Old Testament, they worked miracles also. And in fact, some have read this incorrectly because they say, see, Jesus really isn't God because what he did, what did he do? He took the bread and then he blessed it. And then he looked up to heaven as if to say, like every other person, you know, in the Old Testament and the, those that worked miracles in the New Testament later, like the apostles, he's not really God. He's just a great miracle worker. If the gospel writers are going to report this, each one of them is going to report this two times, except for John. John only records this one time. All right. Then we have to look for something deeper. Okay. And that deeper meaning in fact, was lost not only on us, but it was lost on the disciples because he already in this reading today in Matthew 14, he performs the multiplication of the loaves. And then later on in chapter 16, he does it again. And listen here, later on in chapter 16, he says, when they leave, everybody's finished. Everybody has had their fill more than their fill. All right, that, that's the way to translate properly the Greek is that they've had more than their fill, okay? And when the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread and Jesus said to them, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And what is their discussion? Their discussion is, but we still don't have any bread. Where are we gonna get the bread from? And this is when Jesus kind of sighs and says, you know, how is it that you, and again, the gospels write this, I'm picturing Jesus being a little bit more irate than this, but they put it really nicely here and they say, and it says, how is it you fail to perceive that I did not speak about bread? He's not speaking about just multiplying loaves. That's working a miracle. What he is talking about is something that is, he says in the gospel of John, I am the bread of life. He said, do you not remember that when you were in the desert and you were roaming around and you were hungry, God sent you manna from heaven. He sent you bread from heaven. And all of those people who ate that manna from heaven, just like in the, lo the multiplication, they are dead. So that manna was not unto eternal life. Neither was the multiplication of these fishes and loaves to eternal life. But the message that is trying to be brought across here in this mult multiplication of the fishes and loaves is not a mere miracle. It is Jesus Christ saying, I am the creator. I am God. I am the one now who offers you a bread from which you will never die. And so for us as Orthodox, the multiplication of the loaves has the deeper meaning that it points to the Eucharist. It points to that. And that, because if you listen to the words in the liturgy, it talks about 
when I, when I say, take, eat, this is your body, which is shed for you and for many and is overflowing. And that overflowing that we hear in the St. John Chrysostom liturgy brings us back to this, which says the, what, the bread and the loaves were multiplied so that there were more than enough for everybody that they had to gather up the scraps. We're supposed to connect the dots here. But if we see these events of Jesus as singular events and we do not connect it with what we're doing today, then we are wonderful history professors, but we have no idea of why we are orthodox. So let's make the connection here between what Jesus is trying to tell us that that is life and not wander around aimlessly going, look at the wonderful miracles that Jesus is doing. Okay, I get it, he does miracles, but this is not why he came to the earth. This is not why he became man, and this is not why he put himself through torture and put himself up on the cross and died so that we can talk about the great miracles that he did. He died, he came here, was tortured, died and defeated death, so that he can give us eternal life. And that's how we have to connect scripture with the stories that we hear here of what he did, but always pointing in an orthodox sense to that and not as standalone stories that have no meaning because we can't make that connection.